Hello, Captain Mossman here. In celebration of Women's History Month, I'm joined by two of our senior leaders here today. Ms. Chris Klinkert, our Code 700 Lifting and Handling Director, and Ms. Jenna McGrath, our Code 392 Submarine Program Manager. Welcome. Thanks, Captain. Well, hey, so celebration of Women's History Month. Uh, why don't we just start out with your histories, uh, how you got into the shipyard, how long you've been here, what kind of things you've done in the shipyard. So we'll start with Chris. Okay. Thanks, Captain. Uh, so I started in the shipyard in April 1989, just a few years out of high school. And um, I came in as a GS3 clerk typist, so kind of a, a traditional woman's role in the shipyard. And I did that for a few years, and then I was selected into the Code 135 non-destructive test apprenticeship. So I spent you know, the majority of my career, about 25 years, in Code 135, um, specialized in ultrasonics and in held a variety of positions in that code. And then in January of 2014, I was selected to be the Code 720 division head. That's the inspection test QA and training division head here in Code 700. And then I was uh, promoted to department head here a couple years ago. Fantastic. And Jenna? Yes, sir. Uh, I was hired into the shipyard in 1999 uh, after graduating with a mechanical engineering degree. Came into Code 260, the non-nuclear mechanical engineering division, uh, and then spent a number of years in the engineering department. Uh, 2008 came over to the operations side, and I've uh, held various uh, various positions on the operations side. Most recently, the Pennsylvania ERP project superintendent, and then just uh, just started as the submarine program manager. Okay. So, did you? As you got into the shipyard, uh, did you see you know, opportunities, or did you see roadblocks for those opportunities? I mean, how did how did you see it as you got started in the shipyard? You know, you know, years ago. I mean, obviously today, you have, I'm sure you have a different perspective. But when you started, if you think back, you know, what did what did it look like? Did it look like obstacles? Did it look like full of opportunities? I mean, what are your thoughts? Um, for me, I think I just saw opportunities. I volunteered for every single possible thing I could volunteer for. Got out on projects very early, um, loved working on projects. There were lots of chances to go on sea trials and support underway and do, do things like that. And I've kind of continued to try to do that just as things came up, uh, put my name in the hat and volunteered for them. And, um, you know, there have been detours along the way and didn't, uh, didn't expect to necessarily end up here. Um, but it's just been, uh, it's been really unexpected and fun. I heard you both say you volunteered for everything. Did you, did you feel like you needed to volunteer? Yeah, um, you've asked me that question before, and I, <laughs> I answered you no. I didn't think that I needed to volunteer, but one of my peers called me out and mm -hmm. said that, um, that I probably do feel like I have to volunteer, and I reflected on that, and I think he might be a little bit right in that regard. Um, so when I was younger, coming up through Code 135, um, it was really to get experiences and things like that. Um, but now in this position, I'm I'm comfortable in my position, but I feel like I need to do more um, to carry my weight for the for the command. For a new employee today, male or female, and maybe there's a difference, what advice would you, would you give as a mentor or as a senior, you know, a leader in the shipyard today for somebody coming in that regard, you know, to get experience? Right. I would say volunteer for any job opportunity that you can and, and you know, stretch yourself. Don't take the easy route. Um, I think that the more that you stretch yourself, the more you'll be recognized as a, a leader and uh, willing to do the hard things in order to progress the crew or the department or shipyard. And how about uh, you're from an inclusive type of environment? I mean, men, women, um, different codes, older, younger, all these differences we have are all that very diverse. I mean, if you're looking, you know, if you're mentoring people, um, does that weigh into it? I mean, do you want to? Do you think it's good to have a, a broad, you know, spectrum of people that you interface with and mentor? And I, I absolutely do. Um, I think it's important to have that broad spectrum, just because um, folks are all coming into a mentoring relationship, or even coming into the shipyard with different experiences behind them and and different life views. Um, and if we're mentoring or coaching only people who are like us then we're limiting ourselves and we're limiting them for, for their opportunities in the future. And I grow every time I have a, have a person that um, I'm mentoring or, or talking with or coaching or whatever um, because they're helping grow my perspective too. How have you seen roles for women change or how have you seen the culture change in the shipyard? You know, as a leader, part of, um, part of how we believe in ourselves is, 
you know, we look at the leaders around us and if we see people who are like us, so if I see women in senior roles or senior project roles, it's easier for myself to envision that I can get there. And so I think that that's where we've grown as a command um, is that we have more, more diversity and more women in more senior roles. And so then, it's, then it helps convey that to our younger employees or maybe less senior employees that you know you don't have to um, you don't have to give your life over to the command and you can still um, you know try to balance what's important to you and maintain your self identity as you're going through. Um, I've I've tried to do that and so I try to be that role model for folks. Great, thank you, Chris. So I think uh, leadership does a much better job now than when I was on the waterfront with regards to um, accommodating. Uh, women with young children, you know, single fathers who need to take care of their kids. Um, I definitely felt, when I had my kids, I felt pressure to, um, you know, be right back to work and contribute to, you know, the work that needed to be done. Um, so I think uh, the command has really come a long ways towards respecting the fact that um, people have a life outside of here. I don't know that we've always um, had that perspective. So I think we, you know, we have more work to do, but continuing to focus on you know, what, what's important to our employees outside the command is, is yeah. good. And I appreciate you saying we have more work to do, and I think we all, we're all agreeing on that, that there is more work to do to be more inclusive and, and really to, to develop the culture, respecting each other. It takes the entire command. So I appreciate your perspective on that. And I know both of you are uh, engaged with the employee resource groups. I mean, do you have any thoughts on you know, the advantages of, of someone being involved with an ERG? I strongly advocate for being involved with employee resource groups. I think a couple of reasons. Number one, um, it lets you connect with people in the command that you might not otherwise connect with. Um, employee resource groups come together and it doesn't matter what shop or code or organization you're involved with. Um, you're, you're broadening your group of people and you're broadening your group of peers. Uh, number two, especially the leadership roles in employee resource groups, it's an opportunity to practice leadership in a really low risk environment. Um, a lot of times our, you know, our first time in leadership, it's a work lead or supervisor or branch manager, and those aren't exactly non-pressure cooker jobs. Um, so employee resource groups help you kind of hone those skills and you get coaching and advice as you're going through those and you're gaining a really broad perspective on what the command is working on. So I think that um, investing time in that is invaluable. So Captain, just to tag on to what Jenna, Jenna was talking about is um, our waterfront employees don't have as many opportunities to attend the meetings as our white collar trades do, codes do. And so um, you know, I'd like to take this as an opportunity for to ask for um, supervisors across the waterfront to allow production employees to attend and you know practice their skills and be exposed to other perspectives. Yeah, fantastic. I appreciate that. That's, I agree with that. If you look at our workforce today, uh, about 20% of our workforce is, is made up of women. As you get more senior in the you know the ranks, uh, that number is lower. Um, what do you what advice do you have for anybody in our workforce um, in as we go into the future? You know, how do we change that? We are all diverse. There's so many backgrounds we come from, but how do we change to make sure we are more inclusive? We have more opportunities as we you know take the shipyard into the future. Sir, so from my perspective, I think um, as leaders, we need to be listening to our folks and listening to what they need. Um, people are coming in every day, and they have a lot of challenges going on in their personal lives um, that ends up affecting their their shipyard lives. Um, you know, family care, child care, what have you. And as leaders, we need to listen to that and then try to work on that um, to make the command better for them and to make them um, be able to be supported in the command. I think that we need our employees to know that they can stay true to their values and still progress up into leadership. You don't have to change who you are or how you think in order to be recognized as a contributing, a valuable contributor to our mission. Um, you know, believe in who you are and, and stretch yourself and, and I, you know, you can pick any path you want and, and be supported in the command. That's fantastic. Well, I'll tell you, I'm, uh, I'm humbled, really, to be sitting here talking to you. You are both so well accomplished and have done so many things and uh, you're so engaged with the command and so successful. So I really want to thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. And uh, you know, I look forward to many more years of great things that you're going to do and all those people that you mentor and you work with. Uh, you know, they're going to do great things too. And, and I hope 
everyone listening is, you know, listening to some of the advice you have, I think is fantastic advice. And I really do encourage everyone to get engaged, lean in and, you know, have a wonderful career and with great opportunities. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Sure.